Third quarter earnings season kicking off tomorrow with several big banks reporting. But how are retail investors positioned ahead of the earnings cycle? Here with us now, we've got Stephanie Guild, Robinhood's head of investment strategy. And Stephanie, it's always great to have you on. I just want to talk about what you're seeing in terms of retail activity as we do head into this earnings cycle. Yeah, I think um, our customers consistently uh, trim their winners and buy the stocks that have been dipping. So last month, uh, Tesla was the thing that they were trimming because it had a good month. Um, and then, you know, if you think about month to date, uh, you've seen Tesla um, dropping a bit and stocks like NVIDIA, which they were adding to um, over the last month, um, rising. So I think you I wouldn't be surprised if the activity was sort of flipped. Um, we see it pretty consistently that they trade around their positions. What does that tell us about risk appetite or risk behavior amongst the retail traders right um, now? I mean, I think there's a couple things that we've actually seen this year about mm -hmm. uh, risk appetite and risk behavior. One is that they are truly committed to these long-term positions. A lot mm -hmm. of them are the MAG7 type of positions that you would expect um, them to own. Because our customers, the average age is 34, and they have this longer time horizon, and they invest in the things that they know and use, just like generations before. It's just that, you know, a lot of like Apple's practically a utility company when it comes to our use, right, every day. Um, and so they are owning those positions and then just trading around the volatility a lot like a portfolio manager, mm -hmm. I would say, does. Mm -hmm. However, we have seen an increase, I'd say, over the last couple of months of also just buying broad-based index funds, hmm. uh, more so than I think we've seen before. What do you think that is? I think that there's, you know, there's a conscious, I think across investors, not just retail investors, but also institutional investors, that um, there, there has been a concentration mm -hmm. um, in the market. And so just maybe diversifying a bit more out of just owning those top 10 names um, by at least getting some exposure across that by buying, you mm -hmm. know, more of an index fund mm -hmm. um, allows for, you know, just a little more diversification within your portfolio overall. Is that indicative to you that AI euphoria is starting to calm a bit? Or is it more that, okay, yeah, we get it, AI euphoria, but let's be a little bit more smart somewhere else. I actually think like um, it's the AI is certainly something that's going to change a lot of industries. I think not just like it's starting and you know, started in chips, um, mm -hmm. but it's going to broaden out. I mean, you've seen it like a company like Target is even using it to train their employer, employees on the floor. So um, I think that there is, you know, a, a case be made that um, there could be a step change in terms of innovation that um, that actually is contributing, I think, to us being in the fourth soft landing that we've had since 1960. Right, and, and that's interesting given that the market can't decide what kind of landing we're in. It's <laughs> constantly flipping back and forth. I think it wants to not, the market wants to have lower rates and so they'd rather have bad news, but they're reluctantly accepting that we actually have pretty good news, generally speaking. Well, well, that's interesting and ties into your year-end price target. I would imagine you've got a year-end target of 5,800, but a 20% chance of the market hitting 6,100. What would have to happen to get us above 6,000? I think we just have to get through some of the volatility, the reasons we have volatility today. Um, I think we have to have a little more clear path on where the Fed is going with interest rates. Um, I think we have to have some just more confirmation that the labor market is, you know, not weakening, but just truly like normalizing mm -hmm. after a very hot job market for a couple of years. Um, and I also think we just have to get through the election. Like there is just notoriously weaker returns heading into the election and can have higher volatility as well. Yeah. Certainly. All right, well, Stephanie, thanks so much for coming in studio with us here. Thank Stephanie you. Gill, Robin Hood's Head of Investment Strategy. Thanks so much.